You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. How far would you go to protect yourself and your family? Well, for Marty and Wendy Bird, the answer is whatever it takes. How far is too far? Well, Wendy and Marty Bird let us know and revealed to us that that can't go far enough. They will go to whatever it takes to save their own butts and their own lives and their own family. Welcome to Systematic Geekology. We are your priests to the geeks, which just means that uh, we are these, uh, I guess you say guides and ministers and uh, people and humans who geek out on a lot of different things to help guide you and curate the things we geek out on and then help us go a little deeper into the philosophical and theological nature that these shows reveal to us. And this is not a bait and switch. We are a legitimate geeks. And uh, we happen to have two guests today who happen to be priests, who happen to be ordained ministers. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we're here to guide you through a different kind of, of TV show. A different kind of streaming, uh, bingeable TV. Usually on Systematic Ecology, we're talking things like comics and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers and Star Wars, Star Wars and the MCU. Uh, well, today we have a different kind of show, and uh, it's a little bit of a darker show. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not for those who have a weak stomach. They go to pretty. Um, hardcore dark areas of life and it can get pretty gory it get pretty violent and you ask yourself oh my gosh what are these people going through and why are they doing that and uh, so today we're talking about ozark that Ooh. netflix uh bingeable number one tv show that just wrapped up with season four and kino and i are here to talk about it and uh you may ask yourself why are two men of god uh, suggesting that you watch a show that's really not, may not be of God. And so uh, here we are to talk about this and guide you through it and give a, give you our hot take and why, why we think you should watch it if your heart and stomach can take it. And um, and perhaps maybe you should steer away from it if, if those things make you queasy. But I am Will Rose. I am a Lutheran minister here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and uh, I geek out on a lot of different things. And uh, my wife and I watched all of Ozark and couldn't wait for the next episode every single time. And uh, we loved it, even though it disturbed us. So <laughs> we were geeking out on on that. And I also shared that I geeked out the other night. We had a lunar eclipse and we had a yeah. clear night sky here in North Carolina, not a cloud in the sky. And went out. Our family loves uh, cosmology and the universe and planets and stars and constellation and go watch uh, shooting stars and and love um, thinking about how grand and, and magnificent our universe is. And so to go about on our back porch and take out some high power binoculars, uh, we watched uh, the moon uh, go from full to lunar eclipse back to full again. And it was super fun. And uh, we geeked out hard on that. Kino, who are you? What are you geeking out on? So I'm Kino Kennedy, and I'm also an ordained elder in the United, not United Methodist, oh Lord, please forgive me, the Amy Zion Church, which yeah, is there you Methodist, go. Methodist Church in Cornelius, North Carolina. Um, and I am currently geeking out on Star Wars. I'm still on this Lego Star Wars. Nice. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to do the 100% now. I, I, done, beat, I done beat the whole game. Um, but it's it's a little extensive than I thought it was. Just a lot of a lot of nuances and little stuff that you got. I'm like this, <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> but I'm still, I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it. I got to the point where I had to invite the kids to help me because I'm like, I'm just tired. It's just trying to find these little kyber ky kyber bricks, mini mm. kits, and all that other stuff that you got to mm -hmm. Google and look for and YouTube. Yeah, that's 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 why. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I am. That's why I am. Uh, but, well, it's cool that I, you're bringing your family into it. You said you bring your kids and, yeah, and they're I, helping I, you out the to, game. I have to. Mm -hmm. uh, now, now, funny enough, I got to tell you this real quick. So sure. I bought the game for myself, okay? Because mm -hmm. um, the boys, we have an Xbox, two Xboxes and a PlayStation. And my oldest son has PlayStation. He was like, oh, man, I would love to have like a Star Wars. I was like, I, at first, I was like, I won't go buy it because I done played it. But he was like, no, it's going to be expensive. It's open world. Okay, so I bought it. And I leave. I bought it the week before I went to, to Dallas, Texas. 
And mm-hmm. while I was gone, my wife let me know saying the boy's been playing the game without you. I said, <laughs> I, I kind of figured that. <laughs> But as long as they're not playing under my profile, we're cool. <laughs> ah, there you go. No, as long yeah. as you're, they're not messing up your continuity in the game, then they can Correct. create their own, right? They can. They can. It's always open to everybody. It's always open to everybody. Well, but- it's funny that you mentioned like the, the nuance and decisions you make and go in different turns. You know, these video games, again, it can be like a parable or a way to share like how we navigate our own lives. Yeah. And the show we're getting ready to talk about, different roads you go down and different decisions you make within these games and within life have impact of what the future looks like right yeah yeah listen listen this show is not for the faint of heart let's just Mm -hmm. put it out there Mm -hmm. however the bible is not for the faint of heart either okay (laughs) we'll point it out that this show is like a rated r i think it is rated r i i would say the the bible is nc17 okay Mm. there there are some gory (laughs) well it's not all gory but it's some it's some it's some stuff that make you wonder wow is this is this in the Bible for real? Yes, it is in the Bible. We talking right. uh, infidelity. We talking possible rape. We talking killing. We talking lying. We talking thievery. It's it is almost better than days of our lives. Right, corruption. How power corrupts. Going after money, politics. What you what you it will take to to save your life or the life of others. It reveals. It's apocalyptic in a sense that it reveals what's truly important to you or not. Uh, the Greek word apocalypse. You've heard me say it before on other episodes. Literally means to unveil. So when we talk about apocalypse, we don't mean like zombies and robots and aliens. What we're really saying is, is there's the big revelation or an unveiling of what's important to you, and that's what these stories do and so you know we we tease and we say like you know what why would two holy men of god (laughs) watch (laughs) such such an unholy show and as kino said like yeah well have you read the bible um you know we oftentimes we read the children's bible or a very Mm -hmm. kind of sanitized we're in kind of first grade sunday or better better yet will i don't know if you know but there's actually a um it's called the action bible it is a yeah uh, i have it yeah, I have it too. I have it, I have it too. Mm-hmm. I bought it. I was like, oh gosh, this is this is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a graphic novel. The action graphic bible is novel, a graphic yeah. novel yeah. of the Bible. And there's another uh uh friend of ours of the show and who've I guess gone back and forth and talked to some is uh the word word for word of the Bible, a graphic novel or comic about the Bible. And 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 yeah, I mean First grade Sunday school, they're going to watch Disney shows and mm-hmm. Veggie Tales, and you want to mm-hmm. present the Bible in a way that's that tell story that way. But that's not at the heart of what's at the Bible. Um, and so let's let's level up, y'all. Let's level up <laughs> and look at the look at the Bible as it is and as unsanitized is. and uh, as honest as it is about the human condition and what humans will do and the effects it have in our relationships with one another and systems of power and corruption and, and, and how that relates to, to God. It, and that in the midst of all that here, look at us, two ministers already getting theological uh, already, right at the very beginning. Already, already. Now, in the midst of all that, God wins. In the midst of that, God is guiding and leading and luring uh, uh, God's people uh, to what is right and what is holy uh, to to the end where God's kingdom comes down to us and a river heals all nations. But but before we you know get real theological, we got to talk about Ozark this yes. show. And so um, Kino, how did you discover this show and what got you watching it? So I discovered Ozarks in in the height of uh, House of Cards. So, okay. So I, I'm a huge <laughs> another Cards another uh, G rated show, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. And so, and so, waiting for House of Cards, the new season to drop, I was like, okay, I'll try to watch this Ozark thing. What is this Ozark stuff? It was like, I only, I did not know where the Ozarks was. I didn't know there was a place called the Ozarks for real. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay, this just, and, and from the first episode until mm. the first mm. season first episode until the last season or the last episode i could not get enough and i have to admit that ozarks is the ozarks and house of cards are the only two series that i will rewatch the previous two previous seasons to be prepared for the new season to drop oh yeah yep 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 
Yeah. Good story. Yeah, I'll, I'll confess too that I got out my phone and looked at the the Google Maps to see where the Ozark lakes are <laughs> in, in in relation to Chicago, where they go back and forth, and where right, where right. The, where in the world and the country is. Is I was I heard about it, but that my geography is not that great, so I had to look up my my Google Maps too and see where where is this and where are they. But um, yeah, I was similar. I my the show that I watched was uh, Breaking Bad, mm. and um, again, hard R. Uh, not for the faint of heart, but in terms of like how it helps you see the world and the decisions you make and whether you break bad or not and how little things make a big difference if you're yes. not on the right track. Yes. Uh, talk about a cautionary tale. Um, and, and when I finished that show, I was like, well, what? I, I felt like all shows are done. Like, I, okay, I think I've, I've peaked <laughs> at all TV because it was so good and so intriguing to me. I, yeah. I, I peaked. I was like, what am I going to do next? I don't know. I'll just, I'll keep rewatching Star Wars. Well, there's a, a student in our, in our campus ministry, a senior is getting ready to graduate. And we had talked to her a few times and we talked about Breaking Bad here and there and other shows we watch. And, and she goes, Oh, Oh, Pastor Will, you know, um, if you like Breaking Bad, you're probably like Ozark and it's not as bad as Breaking Bad. I really don't feel like it's as bad as Breaking Bad. Oh. And I was like, Oh, and I was like, okay, I'll have to check this out. Well, Halfway through the first episode of Ozark, I said, "Good night, Julie. You you lied to me. It right, is right, it is right, worse right. than Breaking Bad." But I, in terms of in terms of the story and the hooks yeah. and that first pilot that that got me watching, it, yeah, as as we said, infidelity, um, drug cartels, murder, uh, doing what you can to to get out of dying to save your family save you your family. squirming your way to safety or doing whatever it takes to to just live another day um that's what this show does and then uh that first episode with them in the the ozarks with this like kind of backdrop cool radiohead song playing uh that i was like oh man okay yeah. i'm in i'm strapping yeah. in um yeah. so so ozark is a tv show on netflix all yes. four seasons are on netflix the first three seasons each season has 10 episodes mm -hmm. and then the fourth season has uh, it broke it up into two parts it's uh, part one was seven episodes and part two was another seven seven episodes and that just dropped and and wrapped up so you can see the whole series one oh, through wow. four of the seasons and you're in for a ride um a uh, huge, if you go down that road huge yeah. ride huge huge ride because unlike some folks i watched it as soon as they dropped Mm -hmm. And I didn't wait until somebody told me. No, I, I caught it on the on the beginning and had to wait until they dropped <laughs> the new seasons just to be like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? How am I going to move on with my life? Because I was right. going to. What are you going to do with your spare time between right. now and the next episode? Right. We, all right. have, we all have those shows that we're like, we're just waiting. We're yeah, just right. waiting for the next spring or next fall. When is the next season of The Mandalorian going to drop? You know, right. all, that, all yeah. that kind of thing. But yeah, I think seeing I caught it. Um, season one and it just we 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 binged it and then had to wait for season two and of mm -hmm. course as mm -hmm. soon as it's done i go to google and i'm like when is season two gonna drop when is season three <laughs> like march of 2017 like okay i gotta wait um and in the same way with this this latest one and then when they said that um you know, they're going to drop this final season in two parts there's going to be 14 episodes instead of 10 but they would drop seven episodes let you catch your breath a little bit and let you go to therapy and talk to your friends. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so you, yeah. You got, we're going to give you time to talk with your friends and process this and do some some group therapy, and then we'll drop the final sep seven of episodes. So here we are, two ministers. Uh, if you watch the show, you need some therapy, you need some pastoral counseling, you need to help thinking through this, then, then we are here uh, for you. So we haven't talked to any spoilers yet. Um, no, we're no. going to hop into uh, the season here in just just a moment. So if you haven't watched it, now's your chance to hit pause Please. and and then go, go watch all um, 44 episodes and then and then you can come back and, and listen to us talk about it. But uh, Kino, um, if you were going to set this up, for our folks who are listening who haven't seen this show. Um, what, how would you, without spoilers, do your best without spoilers, how would you summarize this show and then convince them why they should watch it if their heart and stomach can take it? Okay. So if you want to watch a show to look at the dynamics of a family, a nuclear family, a husband and wife, two kids, and how 
the choices of each individual in their family impacts the whole entire family unit, watch this show. If you want to understand more so about <laughs> uh, grief, um, sibling positions, mental health, it, it, even though it's, it's about drugs and drug cartels, that is just an afterthought. It's almost like Walking Dead, where mm-hmm. the zombies mm-hmm. are just there. And yes. so, yeah, the yes. drug parts is just there. But if you want to look at, like, the conflict that happens between different generations and then understanding how you navigate through those things and then one choice lead to another choice, it leads to another choice, it leads to another choice, and then you'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm back at the same point. Please, mm, mm. please, please watch Ozark because this is that type of show. Yeah, I love, I love the great, great job. And, and I, I think you're right. Like I was a fan of Walking Dead for a long time. Mm-hmm. Until I felt like it kind of jumped the shark there for at towards the end. But yeah. I, um, but yeah, the, the zombie apocalypse, the robot apocalypse is just a tool by which to examine the human condition right. and, and to examine and hold up a mirror to what is important to its main character. So what's, what's the most important thing uh, to, to Rick in Walking Dead? Well, you know, it's, it's his son. It's yeah. his family. And, mm-hmm. oh, well, what's the most important thing to Negan in Walking Dead? Well, it's holding on to power and being the alpha male in, in, in the room. Um, and so ours arc is similar. You're right. Is, is the, the drug cartel, uh, the, the seediness and the evil of drug um, smuggling and getting people hooked on drugs uh, yeah, sure. That's apocalyptic. Uh, it's, it's evil. It's bad. But it's just a backdrop to help hold up a mirror to, to force people to ask, what do they really, truly care about the most? And what will they fight for uh, to care about the most? And this show goes through that. Yeah. Um, it, it's it is, easy, I want to say this. It's easy to think that we would do something totally different or the admirable thing given in those situations, but you never really know until you place in those situations to actually what you're capable of. And this mm. show has you to think about that as well. Yeah. And I think when we read scripture too, we, we, we read these hard verses, the other, the parable, we like to see ourselves as the good Samaritan, but maybe mm-hmm. not. I'm mm-hmm. probably the priest who walks on the other side of the road because I don't want to get dirty or I'm going to get in trouble for doing something I'm not supposed to be doing. Especially, I'll lose my job. Especially, or lose my yeah, especially when I'm in through a whole bunch of meetings at the church. I'm like, I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I need a nap. I need. I need a nap. I'm hungry. You're gonna. You're gonna ask me some small question, and I'm hungry. I'm gonna get hangry on you and snap at you, and it's not your fault. I just have had a long morning. You know. <laughs> um, right. Right. So. So I think you know. Um, uh, watch this show. If. If you know. If language. Sex, violence, um, murder, you know, th- those kinds of things are triggering for you if uh, if if your faith um, steers you away from those kinds of things, R-rated movies or um, really, really hard. So there's some difficult things going on here. If that's something, then then, yeah, you don't need to watch the show. There's other things that can help guide you through that. But but if you you've watched Breaking Bad, mm-hmm. if you watch Walking Dead, if if you've gone through those things, Ozarks is another way to kind of help. It, um, guide you in this kind of drama to help examine. Of course, it's entertaining because you're like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen next? How are they going to get out of this? Um, and and what's the, the show is just, man, they nail. I, the reason I still write, read comic books is that I love that last page that makes you go, oh, what's going to happen next? Right. I right. can't wait to see what happens next. This show, I think the TV show Lost did it, Breaking mm-hmm. Bad did mm-hmm. it, Walking Dead did it there for a while. This show, the final scene, uh, they, they, you couldn't wait to hit next episode. On mm-hmm. it. it could be, it could be one o'clock in the morning, and my wife and I look at each other and go, "Can we do one more?" She's like, "I gotta wake up in the morning." You know, can, yeah. can, can, <laughs> can we do? Can we do one more episode? Nope. Let's wait. Let's sit on this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so it's that kind of type of bingeable show that that goes through that. Um, so, um, so yeah, we hope you'll watch it now. You know, here at this point, we're going to say spoiler warning. We're going to go into spoilers. We're going to go into the the specific seasons and characters, and then um, and then uh, talk about the ending and what yeah. we thought about how this ended because it is complete, and then uh, go from there. So um, see you later for those who haven't seen it. Yeah, bye. Yeah, yeah. Circle Thank back you. around. We'll see you soon. Peace. Yeah. Peace. Bye. Uh,
Okay, welcome back to the spoiler edition. Here we are, um, part two spoilers. Maybe Josh can put a little sound effect in there uh, to let people know uh, where where to pick up back. Um, all right, so let's go through these seasons. It's not we're not going to go through every episode, no, but no, no. all right. Uh, but we will talk a little bit about that pilot episode. Kino set up episode one. What is it that hooked you? What is happening to Marty Bird that made him? that forced him to pick up his family and move from Chicago to the Ozarks. So, so let's, 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 what really got me was when Marty was in his office watching that, that video of his wife. Having an affair. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Having an affair while Mm -hmm. talking to another couple and then his, his uh, friend Bruce comes. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, Hey, Hey, Sir, this is a this is a business. <laughs> this is a place of business. Yeah, y'all. He's literally watching a video of his wife having sex with somebody else from a private investigator who's investigating. Which I haven't thought. There's a lot of private investigators. He hired a private investigator, mm-hmm. and now and that happened at the end, season four. So he know. Oh, why did that make that connection? Oh my it's okay. gosh, it's okay. It's okay, okay, all right. So he hired a private investigator. Discovers wife's having an affair. He's watching the actual video of them doing it. And then while he's talking with a couple who, because he's a financial advisor, mm-hmm. he's a hedge fund manager. He knows how to account and move numbers. He's good at his job. And he's literally watching his wife on his computer screen with their, with them not looking at his computer. They're on the other side of the computer, uh, yep, but they can't yep. see what he's watching and his mind somewhere else. Um, and his friend came in and did that. Okay. That set up. And I was like, and that's when I was like, okay. This is not <laughs> this this is not less bad than breaking bad. Like nope. what have you what have you gotten me into, kid? But uh um so so that you, you set up his family family dynamic right now. Right. Um, right. And then go. Sorry, Kino, for oh, no, 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 that's fine. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. So, yep. so then you have you have Marty, you have Wendy, the wife, you have mm-hmm. the kids, Jonah and um oh gosh, I can't think Charlotte. of Charlotte. Charlotte. Yep. Um and and then and I can't remember all the stuff that happened and in, in, it's been so long. Mm-hmm. Um, but but then you end up. So I'm going to just go from the beginning to the tail end, almost the tail end, yeah. where 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 you end up with Marty at a uh, work site with Dale. And you're yeah. like, who is Dale? And why is Dale got a gun asking them about the uh, the lady who stole the money out the register? What? What is this? <laughs> yep. What is this? Why is everybody so scared of Dale? And Dale is so calm and clear. And then he shot mm-hmm. Bruce's girlfriend. Oh my gosh! <laughs> 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 he shot Bruce's girlfriend. So 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 the first season mm-hmm. ends with uh, Bruce being killed, the other guys being killed. And Marty, Marty's almost going to be killed, but somehow, some way, he talks himself into convincing Dale that he could wash or launder the money yes. yep. into the Ozarks of uh, which has more lakeshore than any other place in Thai. Is the Thai world the U.S.? I can't remember. Was it yeah, world? Yeah, it's, world. it's a. It, it could be world. I mean, it's all these little fingers. And like, if you look on the map, it's not a huge lake, but in terms of the nook and crannies of the Ozarks, the the coastline and these little kind of bends of the different lakes, it's a lot of coastline. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so think about how it started and then how it ended, like him just dozing. And then we see the dynamics between the husband and the wife and, and, and trying to push along and saying, Listen, we're about to we we got to move. D- Dale has told us we got to go. Yep. He said, "If I don't see that for sale sign in your in your in your yard within two days, we got a problem." <laughs> yeah, and he literally watches his coworker die and other people die. And Marty has such a, um, you know, quick quick word, quick voice. Like he he can talk himself out of anything. You so know what like, you know what it actually is. You know what it actually is. Funny enough, exactly. he's able to disassociate. Very uh-huh. well, yeah. Like he, he, but but he can compartmentalize and think logically through some situations, which is what is actually funny enough, which is needed because I'm reading this book about uh, family systems, which is mm-hmm. needed when there's when there's um, you need somebody who is cool headed and logical when any stress or high stressful situation that come around that mm-hmm. helps you think through that stuff. 
Yeah, so he he's talking his way out of being shot and killed and murdered and said, I can do this job even better and I can make you even more money. And so he has to – and basically has to – I don't. I can't remember if he told Jonah and Charlotte what was going on yet. They just like That's we got to move to the Ozark. No, but no, Wendy no. knew. He's like, look, if we don't do this, right. uh, we're all going to die. And it's so, the so, so Mexican drug cartel who's going right, to come so, after us. So we're we're thinking that Marty is just a regular guy, and then here's Dale from the cartel, and we like, wait, how did how did this? So you're laundering money for the cartel? Okay, yeah, and just like that. You're laundering money for the cartel, uh, trying to just, and if you don't do your job, they're coming after you and your family. They're coming after you and you and your family. And so that is how the first season starts. And they're driving their way to the Ozarks from Chicago, where they've been most of their lives, all of their lives, yep. um, to then drive to Missouri, to the Ozarks in Missouri that they've never been, and try to establish themselves by laundering Fifty million dollars that's already been laundered. Yep, he has to he has to figure that out. And so, and you go to a small town. Well, it's small. They don't know you. You go to you. <laughs> they don't know you. They don't know you from the hill of beans. You don't sound like them. You know, you're an outsider. You're you an are outsider. literally an outsider, and you're trying you're to come outsider. in and trying to say that mm-hmm. we can. Just, we don't know you. We don't know you. That's my purse. <laughs> I'm king of the hill. That's my purse. <laughs> And that's an interesting thought too. That man, you're helping me, Kino. Think like, yeah, this this TV show is a lot about outsiders and insiders, and how do you get on the inside, and what the choice you to make. It, it, all the you choices know, the birds know, make. You know, Don't just make not, it. No, wait, wait, wait. It's not about outsiders yeah, yeah. and insiders. It's actually a great. If if you start, and this is funny because I'm again I'm reading this book. It's it's for it's it's actually just about family systems. Mm, yeah. It is trying to understand that the system always wants to go back to homeostasis. It doesn't matter how it goes. The system wants to go back to homeostasis. So any change that you do, the system is going to push back. And that's exactly what happened with Ozarks. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. And it's not just the, the decisions that the birds make affect mm-hmm. them. It affects everyone in the Ozarks and everyone. other family systems. So everyone. so here in the Ozarks, when you finally settle into season one, you not only have the Mexican drug cartel, but you also have the Snells which is this farm family in the Ozarks who um, are running their own drug cartel at the Ozarks. And they're competing against the Mexican drug cartel about who has the bigger kind of hand in dealing out heroin and drugs and opiates in, in the Ozarks. And caught up with this, how these little, you know, we got a, a deli and a diner and, a, mm-hmm. and houseboats. And then you have uh, the Langmores. The Langmores. The favorite character. My favorite character in the whole whole thing, Ruth Langmore, who is this little feisty, um, you know, 19, 20 year old something who really is the matriarch of this family because the rest yeah. of her family, her dad's in jail. She's got cousins who are strung out. She's got um, uncles mm-hmm. who are deadbeats, you know, all these kind of things. And she's the one kind of holding this family together and would do whatever it takes to hold them together. But she bumps up against Marty Bird and her life is never the same. Never the same. Never the mm-hmm. same that that. When the birds flew in, the <laughs> winds of change. Uh, happened. Yes, yeah. yeah. When, cause, cause you have so so you got to think if 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 you come into a place where you've been there all your life, and then here comes somebody with. So so I got I got so let's go back let's go back one of the episodes. Sure. Mm-hmm. They finally make it to the hotel to the motel. Mm-hmm. And they are the the Marty and Wendy are trying to find businesses that they can launder the money through. And so you get he gives his whole speech in season one because he's teaching Jonah how to how to launder money. And then Jonah <laughs> ends up laundering his own money, doing it better um, than Marty. Oh my god. Right. Think about this. Think about this. <laughs> All right, let's pause there a minute. Yeah. Dad is teaching like how old, how old is Jonah, you think? Like 15, 16? Jonah, Jonah, Jonah. So he has to be like 14, 15. When the series starts. When it starts, yeah. Yeah, because he's yeah. just a freshman in high school. Freshman in high school. So, you know, imagine yourself in high school. And I don't know if any of our listeners, their parents taught them how to launder money. No. But but here is here is this guy. I mean, yeah, family systems. Go for it. Just, yeah. I just want to pause <laughs> and think that a minute. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so he teaches his son how to launder the money. But they are trying to find cash strap businesses and mainly cash only businesses to quote unquote wash their money. 
That's right. Um, however, because they are an outsider, nobody's really taking them up on their offer to invest in their business, even if their businesses are behind on their taxes or they're not making any money. They don't care. It's their right. business. It is. This is my baby. This is my child. Why would I give that to you when you? I don't know you? You don't know anything about me. You come from the big city of Chicago and trying to come up in here to the lakes where we we are happy <laughs> where we are. And you right. trying to just stir it up. We don't. Nope. Nope. So he has to convince these people that he is almost like them, but not like them. And that's right. the funny thing. That's that is that is that then you know what? That's another another thing that it points out is about class. It talks about class in here. Ah, you're right. The haves and the have not. The haves and mm-hmm. the have not. Those who have it, mm-hmm. and then the affluences that comes with that, and then you being not having what you need, the necessities, and trying to figure out how to get it. It deals with all of that. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop because I no, no, go that's on. good. Yeah, yeah, and it, yeah, not only dealing with uh, like family systems, but also class. And and wealth and and economics and uh, Marty, his character, uh, straight shooter, cool and co- hey, calm and collected. Yeah, well, you I, funny enough, I got to say, this. I have to say this. I have to say because I'm proud of it. I yeah, have yeah. a bachelor's degree in economics. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I, <laughs> this listen, the outside outside of the family, the money stuff and the business. I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is interesting. Like I'm yeah. always interested about numbers and stuff like that. And, and, yeah. and looking at class systems and capitalism and all the other stuff, how it works. So that's, mm-hmm. that's always fascinating my mind. Yeah. This, sh- this show can uh, shed some light on that too, because eventually it gets into not only what's going on in the Ozarks and drug cartel, but you also have the FBI, the FBI chasing down. Of course, the FBI has this drug cartel on their most wanted list. Mm-hmm. Bird is now entangled with them. And so not only has he trying to launder money for the drug cartel to save his his ass, uh, but he's also like the FBI is breathing down his throat because they know what's going on and they see a new character in the game. Why are you here? What are you doing? So now has oh, FBI oh, wait, investigating wait, him. Wait, 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 and wait, then wait, you wait, have the wait, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. We got we got to back up. So so we okay. find out I think in season one that mm-hmm. Bruce was working with the FBI um, yep. for uh, in 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 order to get himself out of the cartel. What we also realized is that Dale suspected something was going on, Mm -hmm. but didn't know to what full extent is still until he started killing folks. And then they found out that uh, Bruce was skimming $5 million from, uh, from the drug drug cartel, which you don't want to do. You don't want to just take money from them because they're paying you enough money anyway to do yeah. your job and to be quiet and then you feel like but that's that's what happens with greed and and money mm-hmm. is it, it mm-hmm. always it always it taps into what's already in us right that, right so you saw the temptation that that marty's friend bruce was having by go ahead and skimming off and i think i can get away with this and that's what got him in trouble and killed in the first place um and then but we have all these interweaving relationships it's mm-hmm. not just one family so you, you have the langmores you have the the fbi you have the drug cartel you have the snells darlene and uh her husband, the, local, Jacob. The, local, the local police the local police are there the, the snells are in with uh the corruption the the sheriff is overlooking what the snells are doing with their drug ring and what's going on because they want to stay in the power um all these things and and i'll just say that this show you know doesn't let you rest it, it it's like the minute that marty's phone goes off like every 5 minutes some other crisis is going on so he's looking at a text or answering a phone call that there is a crisis that he's got to get out of it seems like every 5 or 10 minutes in right. every single episode throughout right. every single season so so that's what keeps you glued you're like oh my gosh how's he going to get out of this what is he going to do here and he keeps talking his way out he keeps he digging does. his own hole he, he keeps does. digging his own grave he keeps like how are you going to get Preach. out of this one yeah, so that's that is what is what is happening in this show it keeps going on and on and on and on, um, with that so, kind of pattern. And then and then um, I, the other thing that's interesting about this show is, and this is this is another thing about family systems is that when you find, and let's talk about the uh, the the marital relationship. When you find that your spouse is spiraling or going through some stuff, that's where. In sickness and in health steps in in the vows yeah. mm-hmm. because we see where Wendy comes in and like we think Wendy and I'm not trying to be funny but Wendy Wendy 
<laughs> Wendy evolved as a character in this whole thing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and she became who she truly wanted to become at the end of this yep. thing, which was to mm-hmm. have some political influence. Because that's all she really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but we see her step up and try to hold the family together when, when Marty was spiraling after a crisis that he could not get over at the time. And it took mm-hmm. him I think uh, it, it could have took him all of season two to get over it. No, because then he got kidnapped too. <laughs> we, he, we're yeah, laughing so, at what so happens in the show. We're laughing because it's not funny. We're just laughing at like <laughs> what the craziness so that happened. I know it's yeah. so complex. <laughs> you just rem- I just you just reminded me, Kino, that yeah, you're right. In one of the seasons, he gets kidnapped by the drug cartel and taken and waterboarded and tortured, so they get stuff out of him, and then he comes back to Ozark and expected to kind of do his job. And I, I, like nothing yeah. ever happened. Mm-hmm. How do you, how do you move on from that? Yeah. And no, no, a lot but, of trauma. A lot of trauma. Wait, wait. Was that before? At, that was that was before they. No, that was after he got he got kidnapped after the preacher. Remember? Uh, mm-hmm. I can't think of the the, the, the preacher's name. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the poor young preacher who was just trying to do it, and his wife was pregnant, and they literally uh, kill her to take the ba- baby. I mean, we're oh my gosh, y'all! This is biblical stuff going on yeah, yeah. Um, about about <laughs> <laughs> about killing folks to get their baby and and all that stuff. Yeah, there was a young preacher who was take who was had a houseboat church there in season one. This is after that season two, you, you kind of left wondering what happened to them. You know, that they were all killed. And so they got this old baby around. They're trying to take care of. Um, And, and Darlene kills her own husband and, and she takes over and um, yeah, it it gets wild. But yeah, at one point Marty gets brought to Mexico um, because Navarro wants to see him for his house. Who's working for him? Is he as no, no, good no, as, he no, no. as he is? Well, well, not only that, but I think because I was watching, I was trying to finish it. I was trying to finish to get caught up, um, yeah. but I couldn't catch everything because every time you watch it, you'd be like, oh my gosh, just this, this. But anyway, um, but, but remember that the issue <laughs> was that Marty didn't trust Wendy because they were sabotaging mm-hmm. each other when they were trying to build a casino. And he was oh, tapping right. Wendy's phone and yep. Navarro got wind of that and was like, hey, what is happening here? Mm-hmm. What's really going on? Like, what's, yeah. what's wrong with your relationship? <laughs> yeah, when you have a, the head of the drug cartel bringing you in going, hey, I need to talk to you about your relationship with your family. Your wife. Because he knows, he knows. I mean, it is pretty amazing because he knew how valuable Marty is. Yes. If he lost Marty, what's going on? So he needs Marty like in line doing his job and all right, um, what's going on with you and Wendy? And it, at some point it comes back around where he has a conversation with the drug cartel head. The drug cartel has a conversation with Wendy and it's like, mm-hmm. Oh, okay. You're pretty strong. You're like and I've, at, for a while there, I thought he was going to hit on her. Um, right. But, but there, there was something there in terms of like, how, can I trust you? What's going on um, with all this? Um, that's, that's triangles. Yeah. That's triangles. Yeah. yeah. Triangles, oh. triangles. <laughs> well, let's go back to the, the Langmores a little bit. Ruth Langmore, oh, my favorite yeah. character. They have this family who literally live in in trailers by on the coastline of the Ozarks, and they're mm-hmm. trying to make it. At, they're, at one point, they're working in a strip club. Another one, they're working in a diner. Marty hires her to bring her in. Uh, I forget how they got entangled, but they're in the same uh, kind of neighborhood, oh. and he ends up hiring oh, wait, her, right? Wait, no, no. Well, let's let's talk about how they got. I like. I remember this part. Okay, so, go for it. So Ruth is a uh, cleaner at the motel. Yep. That at the end of the show, she ends up buying, which I thought was awesome. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, her her three and uh, um, Wyatt are her cousins that she take yep. care of, and yep. they are there. She's getting them jobs because they had they have nothing to do. And um, Ruth ends up stealing, I forgot how much money. Was it $250,000? Mm-hmm. I know it was a suitcase full of money. Yeah. It was a suitcase full of money. And she introduced that money to her cousins and her uncles. And uh, Marty gets wind of it and finds them and tells them, in essence, you can't have this money because this money belongs to Navarro. And if Navarro knows that you got it, I'm dead and you're dead too. Yeah, yeah. That's that's how that's how we're introduced to Langmores. 
Right. And and the the cousins, Ruth and her cousins, they're they're like brothers and sisters. They're so mm-hmm. close. Mm-hmm. Um and, and Wyatt is her favorite and they are very, very close. That has an effect that comes up in, in the final season. Yeah. Um and so so yeah, and, and Ruth ends up getting a part of this. She's a feisty little thing, uh, didn't put up with any BS. Nope. And because because of like what she's had to deal with, like family trauma with her own dad and abuse and verbal abuse and he her dad's in prison she's taking care of this family and doing whatever it takes like the birds doing whatever what it takes uh, to take care of her family um right. Right. and and so so they get all weaved in with each other and um uh, yeah it gets it gets complex as well. very complex so all, all we're gonna say is that ruth and ruth is one of my favorite characters too because of her evolution her growth and her her ability to adapt Mm-hmm. And to keep whatever the because her her objective with the whole entire time was to make sure her family was okay. Yep. But that was the same thing with the birds, though. That yep. that was the objective is just to make sure. And Navarro family. too. He we we come to learn that the drug oh. cartel. He's got his own kids. He got his own. He's kids. trying to think about. It. He's got his favorite dog. He's got his family, and he's yeah. He by no means he's not necessarily a redeemable person. What he's doing is evil. But it just goes to show that no matter what choices you make or how evil or bad or what you do, um, <gasps> you still care for your loved ones. And you're trying to take care of your own. Right. So so that was Navarro's nephew, right? That was his nephew, Javier. At the very end. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. OK. OK. Because because mm-hmm. because then we dealing with extent every time somebody <laughs> was introduced into the family system, mm-hmm. we saw chaos in hell. Let's just put yes. it that. It yep. was just chaos yep. in hell. And it doesn't matter if if we, if we once we saw Navarro, Navarro was introduced, that, that was some more hell. No, no. Let's back up. When we <laughs> met Helen. Oh, the lawyer for the drug. The lawyer. Show. Yep, because mm-hmm. she had she had she was going through a divorce and she had her two kids and she was the lawyer for the truck. She's season truck. three. She's in th- season three, right? She's two season th- three. Two and three. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because that's I'm sorry, I have to say this. I have to say this. Mm-hmm. It blew my mind that Navarro shot Helen in front of the birds. That uh. when when that ended in season three, I was like, you cannot let this go. Right here, I I was like you will. I had to Google to find out when was season four going to drop because <laughs> this was this cannot be the end, and you can't right. leave me like this. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, that th- you're wrong for this. They are and so- there are shows. Let's let's be honest. There are shows that sometimes get canceled because they're not making enough money. So there's cliffhangers. There's yes. shows out there that we wished had an extra season because it let it clean. And as soon as yeah, you're right. When Helen got killed and murdered, I immediately went to the internet and said, please. <laughs> Lord, don't let this be the final episode. I need to know what happens next. But it was a money maker. It's been a huge money maker for Netflix. Very popular, so they they keep going. And even after season four, the way it ended, I the outcry was like, "Oh, you can't end it like this. You got to have another season." And and Jason Bateman, who plays Marty Bird, was like, "Nope, we we ended it. This I have other projects. Maybe there'll be spinoffs later on down the road. Who knows? No, five, ten no, years from I, now. I think uh, I think they should leave it alone. I think they should they leave, should it, leave alone. it alone. They should, yeah. leave, it alone. They should yeah. leave it alone. Yeah. Um." Well, let's, you know, again, go and watch these episodes, these seasons. It gets complex. Every time you think someone's cool, you like them, be careful. They're probably going to die. They're probably going to die. Um, If you feel like Marty cannot get out of this, uh, He's he's gonna get out of it. Um, he's gonna figure out a way. Uh, so that that's kind of the pattern this show has. And you get to season four, um, in this kind of climactic um, ending where they, they it's not just the Ozarks, it's not just their family, but they have like global politics happening. Mm-hmm. FBI with uh, like what happened a civil war in Mexico. They're they're involved with the civil war of like the drug cartel is happening, and then. There's also politicians, get this, who are trying to get on, uh, get in with to raise money and to help get the Navarro off the most wanted list so that they can get voting machines that would uh, give them more votes because they're trying to win elections. There's voting fraud looming, you know, present day politics Mm -hmm. looming and overshadowing what's going on in this show. Uh, So it's not just this family trying to stay alive. um, But but everyone they come in contact, like you said. They, they experience hell. They lose people. They wreck every single person they come in. Yeah. And Ruth even says, be careful, Marty, because everything he touches, he's going to destroy. Yep. And 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 that's just because of what he's trying to do. And he had a way out. He had a way out there. The FBI came to him and said, we will give you uh, protection. 
we will put you, we, we'll, we give you a way out. If you give us the, the names and the money and you turn this over to us, we will put you into this, what do you call it? Like, um, witness uh, protection, witness protection and, and you and your family. And they decided not to go down that road. Yeah. They decided that they, nope. Um, well, they, funny, they, they, they didn't was, trust it or they just wanted to do no, their own So I said, I say they didn't trust it only because that he would have to have plead guilty to a felony, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And if you got a felony on your record, you can't do anything, especially in finance. Right. Because Marty is a money's guy, money, a money guy. Yeah. So, so if he wanted to stay in finance, he could never have taken uh, a felony, anything, because he would never work again. Yep. Yep. And Wendy had these kind of political aspirations of like wanted to to move up to the top and be influential, not just there, but also in Chicago and all over the entire country. In the Midwest, and she she oh she made moves. She made power moves. Just yep. to get to what she wanted. I was like, wow. Okay. So, so are we going to talk about season four real quick? All right. So season four, real quick, um, the finale, uh, broken up to two parts. It starts off season four with them driving down happy go family in a van. And all of a sudden they get T-boned or, or a, a, a big truck like weaves into their lane and they flip their car like 12 times. And then they flash back to like earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the, so you're like, ah, what what's going on there? Uh, so that was a little teaser at the beginning of the series. You're like, oh, was that somebody? Was that somebody did that on purpose, or what happened? Which, um, and then they jump into the season of what they're doing. Kino, what do you what do you think of uh, the final season? So, so I thought as a whole, the season brought closure to me, and I'm okay about how it ended. I like how everything progressed in in that fourth season, especially with the birds trying to navigate and negotiate between Navarro, the FBI, and the political scene in Missouri. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And then how Ruth was still determined <laughs> to wait, wait, was that, was that the end of season? Was it in the season three that, that Darlene and, and Wyatt was killed? Um, no, part, part, Part one of no, season no, part, four. Is yeah, part one of season four. Never mind. Never yeah. mind. Never mind. Yeah, it, no, it's, it's, it's good. So, yep. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 listen, I'm going to say this. I was surprised that Darlene made it to, to the end, almost. Yeah. Because yeah. she was a firecracker and a mm-hmm. loose cannon that only Jacob could uh, wrestle that wild Mustang, but even he couldn't. <laughs> Because you already said that she killed him. She killed. They were going. This I gotta say this. They were going to kill each other. This this mm-hmm. is how it's interesting their, their whole relationship. They were they were plotting to kill each other on the same day. It's yeah. just that uh uh gosh, now I lost the woman's name. Um Darlene. Not, not, Darlene, Darlene. I was gonna say yeah. Diane. Dar- Darlene, Darlene just poisoned him and uh and yep. uh and and uh oh my gosh. Now my mind went blank again. Darlene and um, what's her husband's name? Jacob. Um, Jacob. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Jacob. Yep. Jacob. Darlene and Jacob. So Jacob was going to stab Darlene. Darlene just poisoned him. Gave him some um, <laughs> uh, ricin that you can actually yep. make from the pits of uh, cherries. That's that's yep. how that's exactly what she did. And she put it in his coffee, and she's crazy. <laughs> and I, I thought I thought that Darlene would have died. In the first season or the second season, when they got shot up, the car got shot up. But no, she she survived, and then she yes. had. To, yeah, she just. I was surprised. Well, and and for those who are listening who doesn't who have never watched the the show but want to hear us talk about it, like like here's the crazy thing: Darlene, like maybe in her sixties, right? Um, I know maybe uh, about start- it. She's in her sixties. She's in her sixties. I would even want to say older. I didn't know. I was sixties being generous in terms of how old she is. Um, she starts dating. Ruth's cousin Wyatt, who's like maybe nineteen, maybe eighteen. He's eighteen. Um, he's he's still, eighteen. I don't and think so, he graduated high school. I don't think he graduated. I know. Uh, <laughs> so, so she's like engaged to Ruth's like cousin. No, no. It's, they get married. Remember, they get married. They get married. They, they get got married. married. They got married. Um, so, so there's that too. Um, and and I can't believe she lasted that long either. But but also the subtext here, we didn't talk about it. I won't talk about it long. But but Wendy has a brother who has mental illness. Mm-hmm. Who is uh, his and him coming in back into their lives was gonna 
uh, kind of shipwreck and sabotage a good thing that they had going. Things were going smoothly until her brother, who has mental illness, came in bipolar. Uh, he started dating Ruth, um, and they connected. And Ruth didn't understand how deep the mental illness was. Um, but but you know, Wendy had his her brother killed yes. um, by by the cartel to get him out of the way, and it was you know it tore her apart. But she had to do what she had to do to save her family. Yes. And um, so there's that. So Ruth is is of course doesn't like them now is on the outs with marty and wendy because of that but then wendy's dad mm -hmm. comes into the scene in the final season who's from boone north carolina mm -hmm. who they even have a shot in one of the shots about him back home of main street on boone they talk mm -hmm. they talk about valacruces they talk about boone uh they come to north carolina <laughs> and and he's real involved i mean obviously he's kind of a scumbag too he's a uh, he deals with alcoholism, abuse. It, it, you definitely get the feel he's not been the best at his whole life, but he's a member of a church in a very kind of um, fundamentalist church. And, um, you know, and, and Wendy's very like, yeah, you can hide behind your church, but you have a lot of things that, that you need to own up to as well. And yeah. so, he, of course, he wants to find his son, but he's dead. And all that kind of happens in, in season four. Um, and, and eventually you get to the point where well, Wyatt is killed, Darlene and Wyatt is killed uh, by um, by the uh, Javier. Uh, Javier, 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 which is the drug cartel's nephew. And oh man, uh, and then and Ruth doesn't at the end of the first seven episode seven and episode or season yeah four. season four episode seven the part end of part one. Ruth does an acting job of watching and seeing her cousin killed. One of the most amazing acting jobs. If she doesn't, she already has an Emmy for this show, I think. Okay. Um, but but if she doesn't get another one, uh, it's a crime because I've I've never been so moved watching a TV yeah. show and so moved that I had to like watch a stand up comedian after that show because I I couldn't go to bed. It was it was haunting. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you and then you wrap up this this season. I know we're getting a little long in the tooth, but we could talk about it forever, y'all. Um, <laughs> the uh, uh, so the season wraps up. The whole fun, the whole show wraps up with Ruth um, killing Javier, the nephew of the drug cartel, and they are and the Wendy and and Marty are so close to having political power that mm -hmm. they're almost in charge of the entire cartel. While Navarro's in prison, they put Marty in charge of the cartel down in Mexico. Wait, 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 uh, wait, 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 wait. That was before. His sister, remember the sister, because Javier's mother came yep. back into the picture. There's another family family dynamic. Yeah, another family dynamic. <laughs> uh, but but there is a character in there. We're we're two ministers. We're priests, of the geeks. There, yes. There's a priest that shows up at the end yes. of this season, and he starts asking some questions. I don't know the priest's name. I don't know if they reveal it or not. Um, but but he's kind of like this confessional spiritual advisor to Navarre, the drug cartel. And with with Marty going down to Mexico to make the hard decisions, to make it look like he's in control, to make it look like everything's all right. But this priest is in the room and, and he kind of represents the the eye of God watching Marty. And he starts asking some questions about why. Why are you doing this? Is this satisfying? Is this really what you want to do? Um, and so I really feel like it's interesting that the show wraps up when you go through all these systems, these power systems, family systems, economic systems, um, uh, human sexuality and relationships are all wrapped up in, in this series. And finally, at the very end, there's a priest with a black suit on and a white collar that's looking and says, why? What choices are you making? Is this worth it? Um, that, that moved me, of course, being someone who wears a white collar, yes. uh, every Sunday, <laughs> Keenan, I don't know how you reacted to that. And what I, did you see him as the watchful eye of God in that yeah, moment? Yeah. Yeah. It, it was interesting to recognize that Navarro was active in his faith, mm -hmm. um, because he had, he had, the priest was actually a part of the compound. Yeah. That was, that was his parish. Yep. And and then to uh, see how the priest began to act on behalf of Navarro, um, but also beginning to his mere presence changed the dynamics of the whole series because then mm. again, like mm. you said, you begin to notice yeah everything that we we've been doing up until season four, it seemed like we begin to weigh with murder. 
literally a lot of folks got away with murder. <laughs> <laughs> but then here's this priest that represents mm. the 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 represents God in such a way that you begin to wonder, has all of this been for nothing? Mm. Ha- have I been really trying to save my family all because of a lie that I told mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that enmeshed and entangled everybody else that we came all because mm. I, I didn't want to die. I was scared for my own life. Mm-hmm. And so, and so, yeah. So the priest introduced this concept of, is it really worth it? Yeah. Is what you're doing validation or is it bringing you the peace that no one could ever have? Mm. Because they were always concerned and looking over their own shoulders that somebody was out to get them at some point. I don't care. I don't care who you are. The the listen, the sheriff got it, the FBI got I, everybody was looking over their shoulder. Yeah. Nobody nobody had peace except for that priest. Except for yep. the priest. You're right. That priest did have a, a kind of a non anxious presence about himself. Um mm-hmm. and and he ends up having another conversation with Wendy too. Like he he shows up at, in the Burns house at some point and and has this frank conversation with Wendy, who has a problem with religion, has a problem with her dad, has a problem with, because there's a toxicity there within the type of of spirituality and church that she sees her dad as a part of. That she her trust issues are 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 are. <laughs> <laughs> not existent because of, of how she's been treated in trauma in her life. Mm-hmm. Um, but the priest says something like, you know, say I went through these things too. I, I, I would have killed my parents. I would have killed my dad if I hadn't gone to church right. and, and joined seminary. Well, Wendy finally decides that a light bulb goes off. She has an epiphany and she goes to church, but a different kind of church. It's not a church with a steeple and stained glass. She goes to a mental institution and a health and wellness, um, uh, uh, checks herself in. She checks herself in, uh, to, to, uh, a facility that's there to help get people back on track after, after mental breakdowns. And but she, that was, power, that was a power move though. That was, it was a, a power move, but notice that was, that's when she has her confession. She's in her confessional booth with her, with her, her with her uh, kids. She's like, look, and she lays it all. And she is the mm-hmm. most honest we've ever seen her mm-hmm. about. That's she true. hates what she did to her brother. She hates she, like her grant. Her dad is, is not the man you think he is. And, That's and we've done all this for you and for us. And I know what I'm doing with this politics is wrong. Her confession there in her church, quote unquote, um, is a, is a very powerful speech. And you think that that's going to be a place where they start turning around a little bit. Maybe they'll start making some right decisions and turn this around. Uh, but they're faced with a final, final choice. And, uh, Kino, I'll let you let chime in on what that final choice is. So wait, wait. So so you had me, when yeah. you talked about confession, this had yeah. me to think about this book I read called The Anatomy of the Soul. Okay. Um, it was written by, I had to Google it. Uh, it was written by Dr. Kurt Thompson. And one of the things that he talked about that that I think for folks, a lot of folks don't understand, this just, and I'm going to get to it, yeah. is that confession restores broken relationships. Yes. It restores broken relationships. And then the, the and, and what we believe is that once confession happens, it's followed by repentance, which is that you're saying that you're not doing that which you once did. That you confess, mm-hmm. but you're turning and going in a different direction. New direction. Yeah. New direction. And so, and so by her doing that, it actually changed the dynamics of the, their whole family. It did. Because at the end, we are faced with wondering mm-hmm. who did Jonah shoot? Mm-hmm. Because it is the birds, it is the uh it's the detective, uh, and 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 the goat is there, right? Is the goat not there too? Uh just no goat. It's just the uh, the the ashes of of Wendy's um, dead brother, brother in the, yeah. in like a porcelain goat. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the porcelain goat. I'm talking yeah, about yeah, the porcelain goat. Oh, he's present. That's right. Her dead brother is present he's in that present, circle. He's present there in that Man, circle and haunting them, haunting yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. And so and so it ends. Yeah, well, for that, before okay, that. Okay, okay, okay. So so. The birds are one less. People can hear our enthusiasm. Maybe you've cut this off. You can just hear our enthusiasm on this show. The um, so the birds have this major, major political fundraiser happening on their casino, where it looks like 
things are going to all fall into place with Navarro, Navarro's sister, you've taken over, the politicians who are in their back pocket are going to get some money, even Ruth is helping them out. Uh, but but what's looming over this is that Ruth killed Javier and Javier's mom, Navarro's sister, is there at the party and she's dying to know who killed her son. And she finds out, so she, someone squeals on her, that Ruth is the one who did it. No, and she so, didn't, no, 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 it wasn't just someone. It was the, the CEO of the, oh, the drug pharmaceutical company. company. Yeah, oh, so we <laughs> we didn't even bring up y'all the pharmaceutical company <laughs> that's in the back pocket of the drug cartel. Man, that's selling um, opiates to everybody, selling opiates to everybody, so buying heroin there's, there's, and selling opiates. Yes, yep, yes, yep, that's it. Um, so yeah, that's that's a whole nother side I know we didn't even talk about. So they find out that Ruth, but the birds had a chance, or or they were kind of in a hard place. Do they save Ruth, or do they risk their own lives to save Ruth? Or do they just let Ruth get killed? And Ruth is dressed in all white. She goes back home. Her H- Javier, um, Javier's mom, um, uh, Camilla, mm-hmm. uh, Navarro's sister, meets her there. She's in all black. So it's like this Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader moment. It's oh, like yeah, a, yeah, it's like yeah, a yin yeah, and yang. Yeah. It's a good and evil. However you want to uh, uh, attach it. But but Ruth is the one who dies at the end. And I was wondering if she was going to make it to the end or if she was going to get killed or if it was going to the birds who were going to get killed. But it, Ruth was the one who was the final murder, unless you get to the final scene. And, and yeah, it's, Jonah, Jonah takes out a gun and it goes black and you hear a gunshot and you don't know who don't he know. actually killed. You think don't he killed know. a detective, but man, he's been mad at his mom a long time. A long time. And my suspicion mm-hmm. is, my friend and I have been arguing, I, I think Jonah killed his mama. I'm just, oh. just going to put it out there. I'm just going to put it out there because every since, uh. and this this is why I realized it, that relationship changed when she lied to him about Ezekiel. Yep. When, he, when, he, when she lied to him, he decided then he can't trust anything his mother says ever again. And he was pretty close with Ruth. And if he knew that Ruth Ruth died and that she was the one who got it. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's 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 just that's just my thoughts is that mm-hmm. I, I just saying that Jonah killed his mama. I don't well, well, well no. in kind of a soprano style or other show style, they, they it does go black and you hear a gunshot and you can mm-hmm. and you're left guessing what Jonah did with that gun and what happened next. Did he shoot? Um I don't think he shot his sister. I no. thought he shot his dad. It could no. be his mom. It could be the detective there who was going to bust him no matter what. Or he could have shot the goat. He could have shot. Uh, shot. He could shot. Uh, 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 <laughs> is it Ben? Yeah, yeah. Ben. He could shot Ben. I don't think he yeah. shot Ben. I don't think. He shot. Yeah. I, you see, the detective was his mother, and I'm just going to say his mom, just just to be uh, contrarian. I just want. There you go. I like that. I like that. That's good. <laughs> Alternate realities, and you could what if this? Uh, we've we've been on a few what if episodes. Mm-hmm. Kino and I have been on talking about what if, and you could do some what ifs in this show. Uh, pretty much every episode. Uh, what if they'd done this differently? How right. how would their lives be differently? Different. Um, but as you can tell, y'all, we we really love this show, and we geeked out hard. A lot of this <laughs> just Kino and I having a chance to talk about it together yeah. on air in public, yeah. so you yeah. guys can overhear <laughs> our thoughts our thoughts on it. Um, amazing show, yeah. amazing writing, amazing directing, a great soundtrack. There are times when I had to look up the song, a lot of Radiohead and mm-hmm. other songs. Mm-hmm. I was like, what is that playing? That is moving. And, uh, I, I, I just, we, I loved it to the end. And I, uh, there were fans out there, internet reactions. How could you do that? How could you kill Ruth? How could you do this? How could you do that? We need another season. But, but I think, you know, and I are on the same page that, um, uh, uh, it ended the way it did, and I don't. I don't want to see it. Any, I don't want to see another spinoff. I don't want to see Jonah as the next Marty Bird no, down in no. in in Mexico Mm-mm. laundering I, money for the drug cartel. No, no, I, I'm okay with with the closure that they presented. I'm okay. okay. I'm okay with seeing blackout the gunshots and then suspecting. That's fine because it at at the end you see that that the Marty was able to save his family. Yep. Yeah. Well, we we talked um, um, <laughs> oh my God. theology and God in the midst of all these things, and and again, this isn't like your your normal kind of like geeky thing like at Comic Con. Nobody's going to cosplay Wendy or Marty <laughs> at Comic Con. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> um, someone might someone might cosplay Ruth. She's a character, man. She could yeah. be a good character, but yeah. but I you know in terms of 
you know, it, it's there, the theology of the, a parable, a cautionary tale of making right and wrong decisions and what you, of, of family systems, as you said, Kino, of mm-hmm. economic systems, um, uh, class and classism. Politics. It, it's, politics is, is all there. And the Bible is full of that too. In the midst of it, God is present. God is guiding and leading. Uh, God doesn't fix all of it. God puts a lot of things in our own hands and yes. says, all right, I'm entrusting you. Uh, that's the mystery of this um, uh, you know, messiness of life that we're all a part of, that God entrusts stewardship of earth and relationship relationships with us. And, and um, God intervenes. God is there. God is present. Uh, but a lot of us, it's up to us and the decisions we make, too, and that makes an impact um, moving, moving forward. Um, yeah, so quick ratings out of uh, one out of ten. What do you what do you judge this uh, this show? Ten, you know? ten. Yep, yep. Ten. yep. It's, it's one of those. You. It's one of those shows that I will I will rewatch over and over again just to put myself back in that that setting that mode of being suspenseful and like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, can't believe this, can't believe that. Yes, this is one of those great great. Yeah, shows. yeah. I'm there right right with you. I it's hard to give me give things ten. Correct. Uh, so I'll give it a nine. <laughs> Point seven eight, <laughs> nine point seven eight for me. Okay. Uh, what it is 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 good. Um, awesome. Well, let's let's wrap this thing up. Um, if you, I forgot to, at the beginning of the episode, but but hey, if you want to know more, you want to reach out to us, you want to uh, ask questions, you have a different take of how this thing ended or things that excited you, reach out to us on our website, systematicology.org, uh, and then we're on the social media stuff as well. Hit us up on Patreon, support us so we can keep doing episodes like this and and perhaps show up at, at Comic-Cons or do live podcasts with one another. We might have Systematic Ecology Con at some point in the future. If you donated, if you got discretionary income and want to donate, um, you know, uh, uh, some money that has a lot of zeros behind it, we'll do a systematic ecology, uh, convention. Yeah. Yeah. I can promise you that. I can promise you that. Um, Kino, as we wrap this thing up, what are, uh, some recommendations that you, uh, you have anything out there you'd recommend to folks? Uh, I have nothing. Okay. Uh, I have nothing because I'm I'm <laughs> I'm currently <laughs> reading reading these books, so I haven't really watched anything except for Ozarks for real. Like literally, <laughs> well, I th- I think you made that the one about confession. I think it's important. That there's, yeah, the, I, I, we're in the Protestant um, kind of on the Protestant end of the spectrum when it comes to the christian family and so we don't necessarily have confessional booths Mm -hmm. uh, but do people come to us and share things but but there's a healthiness we start each worship service with a corporate confession uh being honest with god and one another that we're all fallen creatures so what's the name of that book again about confession you're saying you read uh the anatomy of the soul kurt thompson kurt thompson is the author good recommendation yeah good yeah 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 um, my recommendation is, um, I, you know, I geek out on comics and, and, uh, Star Wars and all those things, uh, but I also geek out on surfing. I've been surfing my whole life and, and, and love it. And we're here, we are getting close to summer. The water's warming up and there's a show on Apple plus called make or break. Okay. And it is a documentary of kind of behind the scenes of the world surf league. The WSL is the, is like the NFL or the NBA of surfing. They have they go around the world and have a surf tour. And at the end of the year, they crown a world champion, whoever has the most points and all this stuff. And there's a documentary. I, I watch every contest that comes on. You can live stream and whether they're in Tahiti or Australia or Hawaii, you can pull it up on, on the computer and watch the contest. But this is on Apple Plus called Make or Break, and they go behind the scenes of like the surf tour. And so if you know anything about surfing, they'll help explain it to you. Go watch it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I guarantee you, you'll you'll like that show and, and the drama of these people trying to make a living surfing is pretty fun. Yeah, so, check it out. I'm going to check it out. Yeah, check it out. All right. You know, this has been super fun. Uh, and remember, you all, uh, share the faith, share the geek. This was an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network.